House Monday Church brings you the undiluted word of God to channel your life God's way. Hallelujah. The power of words. We learn that with words you can create your life. You can create your world. With your life, I mean with your word, you can heal, you can harm. You can destroy. We saw the word of the Lord creating the whole world. And we are made in the image of God. So if God used his word to create the world, we too can use what? Our words to create our own world. I don't know the kind of word you want. God said, let there be light. And there was light. Because he wanted light. Let there be light. And there was light. In your house that is facing lots and lots of turbulence, you can speak peace to it. He said, peace be unto this house. And because you have declared peace unto that house, you will experience peace. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's turbulence in your office. And it's like everything you do. Everything you do. Your bosses are not satisfied. But you can go to your office tomorrow morning. And say let there be peace in this office. Everything I do. Will be accepted. By my bosses. They will not complain over any of the assignments. Truly. It will be so. In the name of Jesus Christ. We also, we also learned that as Christians, we should speak gracious or grace, yes, gracious words. Because our master Lord Jesus Christ spoke gracious words. After he spoke gracious words, people were marveling. They were wondering, is he not the son of Joseph? How come he has these gracious words in his mouth? People will be marveling that you are speaking gracious words. You know why? Because the whole world is in perilous times. So many things are happening that will make people not to speak well. But you are speaking well. And then the people say, ah, this condition, these situations, bedeviling the nation, bedeviling the environment, bedeviling everywhere. You will even have cause to speak graciously. I say, yes. You have to because the master spoke graciously. I decree upon you the grace of the master to speak graciously. Amen. You will not speak what will anger your neighbor. Amen. What will annoy your neighbor. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You will not speak what will bring you slap. Are you hearing? Oh, you're quiet. <laughs> I say you will not. You didn't say amen to that. Amen. You have not spoken before and somebody slapped you, Abby. Okay. Praise the Lord. One journalist, lady journalist, posted on the social media how she went, you know, uh, recording police people, you know, at the crime scene. Police taking a gunje and making trouble and yelling, you, you are capturing them. The slap that they gave to her, I don't think she has recovered yet. <laughs> when I saw the thing, I said, don't you know you are in Nigeria? Nigeria of all, all countries. Is there any rule of law? There was a time in Israel, people were doing whatever they like. Go to the book of Judges, you will learn that. People were doing what they like. That's, what this, that's the situation in Nigeria now. People do what they like. Serious slap. May you not be slapped this year. <laughs> oh, you cannot, if you like, don't say amen. If you like, don't say amen. There's a kind of slap that you slap in your mouth if you don't, you don't burn by force, by fire. 
Uh, that shall not be your portion dude. in Jesus precious name praise the Lord I want to talk to you about the power of a vow the power of a vow every instrument that we have seen worked for others can also work for us whatever power or whatever instrument whatever weapon that other people use in the scriptures that worked for them can also work for us. The Bible says we should be followers of those who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. What is a vow? A vow is a solemn pledge or promise to do a specific thing. And I want us to look at our anchor scripture from the book of Genesis 28 and verse 20 to 22. Genesis chapter 28, I read from verse 20 to 22. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. Verse 22. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tent unto thee. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know all that Jacob passed through in his relationship with his brother. How the brother wanted, wanted him to die or wanted to kill him the brother Esau wanted to kill him because he stole his birthright as it were when he set out to move from the father's house he needed the companionship of God he needed God on his side and what did he do the Bible says Jacob vowed a vow Jacob vowed a vow now, let's look at Genesis 31 and verse 13. Genesis 31 and verse 13. Genesis 31 and verse 13. The Bible says, I am the God of Bethel. Where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou vowest, 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 <laughs> oh, King James English. Wonderful English. Vowedest a vow unto me. Now arise, get thee out from this place and return unto the land of thy kindred. Praise the name of the Lord. Please know that God knew when this guy was making a vow. Because God is testifying in this passage where, where, where where thou vowedest a vow unto me. So every vow that you vow, vow is unto God, as it were. We vow unto God. We promise to do something for God. We promise to do something that will bring about glory to his name. God takes notice of our vows. When you open your mouth to tell God, I will do this if you do this. Just know that God is going to do what you said he should do. He is also expecting that you will carry out what you have vowed to do. Bible is full of individuals who have used the instrumentality of vow to get things from God. 
Jacob vowed a vow. If you do this for me, if you do that for me, I will do this. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord, I'm reading Numbers 30 and verse 2. Numbers 30 and verse 2. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord, don't forget, you vow unto who? Unto the Lord. And swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond. He shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeded out of his mouth. God is very particular about the words that come out from our mouth. You remember in the first service, we saw where the Bible says that every idle word that proceeds out of our mouth, we will give account on the day of judgment. That means every word that you have been speaking for God, against God, for man, against man, since this year started, it has been recorded. There is an application that is on now that you put in your phone whatever conversation you have in anybody is recorded. Hello? So you should be very cautious these days, so I'm telling you, frankly speaking, you talk to someone, it's recording you. You don't have to allow or wait for MTN to do it. There's an application that does it free of charge for you. All you have to do, you have to put it in your phone. I'm not talking about chinko phones. It's not every... It's not every phone that can take that kind of application. It's not Chinko phone. But you know what we mean by Chinko phone? That's China phones. Bonkers phones. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Every conversation is recorded. If man can create... I'm, I'm going somewhere. If man can create an application... For recording of voices. I'm not talking of you going to the studio. You're going to the studio to do your recording. You are conscious about it. But this one, you're just talking on the phone with someone. Somebody is recording you. And then you say, I didn't say so. I didn't say so. Fly like I can swear. You say, okay, okay, hold on, hold on. Pam, you just open the phone, put it on loud, and the thing is speaking. Eh? You say this, and they say this. Your voice, everything is clear. You can't deny it. Then the Almighty God is telling you that every I do word that you speak, you will give account. Is that not a serious matter? You need grace for sanitif uh, uh, sanctification and sanitization of your tongue of your words, of the word that comes from your mouth. It needs to be sanctified. It needs to be sanitized. So that only good words will come out from you. Only good words. Only good words. Only good words. I decree upon you that your words will not imprison you. Amen. Your words will not put you into trouble. When the children of Israel were murmuring against God in the book of uh, Numbers 14, they never knew that God was taking record of it. After they finished, they said, Uh-huh. All that you are saying, I'm going to bring them to pass. Why have you brought us? Moses, they were not actually talking to God directly. Who were they talking to? Moses and Aaron. Why did you bring us from Egypt to suffer in this wilderness? And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt? Or would God we had died in this wilderness? See, murmuring, opening their mouth. 
forgetting what God has done for them in the time past. If you see a woman messing up with the husband, with the mouth, you would be surprised. This woman has forgotten that this man traveled a long distance to pay her dowry. What have you done for me? I've done this for you. Forget it. Other men should have done it. Is it because I married you? I, I, I just pity you to marry you. Mouth. Words of mouth. You are pitying your husband to marry him? Oh, this mouth, eh? If a mouth, our uh, old people say, if mouth builds a house, it's mega. But when, house, when hands build house, it's not as mega as that of the mouth. <laughs> Flamboyant talking. Bragging. You are healed. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Let's see one woman in the Bible who engaged the instrument of a vow. The power of a vow. Her name is Hannah. 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 11. 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 11. Oh Lord God. And Hannah vowed a vow. And said, Oh Lord of hosts. If Thou will indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid and remember me and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man child. Then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. And there shall no razor come upon his head. Hallelujah. Amen. Hannah engaged or utilized the instrumentality of vow to get what she wanted. A man child. Not just a child. She was specific. When you are vowing unto the Lord, be specific in your demand. So that when that thing is done, done, you will know that that thing came as a result of the engagement of the instrument of what? Vow. Don't just vow for vowing sake. Let vow emanate from your heart. You know and you know that God only has the power. Only God has the power to deliver onto your hand that which you are looking for. And so you are provoking God through the instrumentality of a vow. Vow has a way of provoking God. You are calling him on the scene. You are telling him, come and attend to me now. Beloved, you too can secure your heart desire through the instrument of a vow. Don't settle for less. Go for the best. Hannah did not ask for any kind child. Give me a man child, a male child. Any vow that is targeted at the advancement of the kingdom of God will always secure or attract the attention of heaven. I want to imagine... Oh, I, I, yes, I, I want to imagine a man who is desirous to use his money for the advancement of God's kingdom. Going before God. God, you see this business I'm doing. It's fetching me only thousands. But these thousands cannot promote your kingdom. Oh God, my father, I vow today that the first million you will give to me is for you. <laughs> oh God, I vow today, the first 10 million you give to me in this business is all yours for the advancement of your kingdom. You have provoked God to catapult you from thousands to millions. But I can tell you, 
there are people who will vow and not redeem. I remember one of my beloved partners in YDI, pharmacist Jude Elwe, wonderful man who loves God. A couple of years ago, I was praying for my partners in YDI. And the Lord led me to anoint their palms, anoint their palms for a financial turnaround. They will come to the office, I pray for them, and blah, blah, blah. Now, this man, a pharmacist, he came and it was his turn for me to bless him, to pray for him. Opened his hand and I prayed for him. The Lord will give you great wealth to be able to sponsor the kingdom of God, to be a blessing to humanity. You know what he did? He went home after the prayer. He didn't tell me. He wrote a check, one millionaire check for YDI and kept it by his side of his bed. Already signed. And he told God, God, if you do it, I will take this check to YDI. A vow. He vowed a vow unto the Lord. Not too long, he got a contract that he made 2.5 million. He brought the check. 1 million. The remaining 1.5, he distributed them full gospel here because the member is an executive member of full gospel business men's fellowship. He gave them, gave to his church, gave everything. 2.5 million naira that he got. He did not benefit anyone directly. But as I talk to you today, God has opened him up. He moved God through the instrument of vow. How I wish a single lady that has been waiting for God to say to her, will vow before God and say, Oh God, if you give me a husband this year, Lord, three months of my salary is not my own. It's all yours. God, if you give me a husband this year, that husband that will help me to save you, that both of us will save you together, is the kind of husband that I want. God says, eh, I will give you. Because I want People that will be moving in my kingdom. That will be used as instrument for the advancement of my kingdom. God would definitely give you. But I can tell you, some people want money to be like others. Just like the children of Israel wanted a king to be like other nations. Nietzsche, I want to buy a limousine. I want to buy a Lexus. I want to buy a Hummer Jeep. I want to buy Lamborghini. I want to buy this. I want to live in the finest house. God is not against your living in the finest house. But if you are vowing unto him, just to be like others, that vow will not see the light of the day. God will not respond. Because all the people that vowed in the scriptures, they vowed to advance the kingdom of God. They vowed to to advance the kingdom of God. Advance the kingdom of God. You shall advance the kingdom of God. The, the, you know something? Immediately God. You know God was in need. God was in need of someone that will advance his kingdom. Do you understand? Because Eli had failed God. Eli's children had failed God, as it were. So God was in their need of a prophet that will advance his course. And then, I, I think it was the work of the Holy Spirit that must have ministered to, to, to Hannah. Ask for a child that you will give back to God. <laughs> Ask for a child that you do what? That you will give back to God. Ask for a child that, will give, that you will give back to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 
and she did that and God decided to honor his own part of the bargain. Gave Samuel to her and Samuel's mother, that's what, um, Hannah also uh, uh, did her own part by giving Samuel unto the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Any vow that you vow that does not cost you something is not a proper vow. Any pledge, any vow that you vow to God, that will move God, that will not cost you something is not a true vow. Every vow that moves God is a vow that, I'm, that must have cost the person vowing something. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 4 to 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 4 to 5. When thou vowest a vow unto God, I hope you are seeing everything unto God, unto God, unto God, unto God, unto God. Defer not to pay it, for he had no pleasure in fools. Because when fools make pledge or make vow, they don't even remember that they made any, made any pledge. That's a fool. Like in our ministry, for instance, if I tell you the number of pledges that people have made that they have not fulfilled, and we are not that kind of ministry that will trouble people. Because my belief is that you are vying unto God. You are not vying unto me. If you have vowed unto God, then be willing to pay it. So we don't trouble people. We don't even remind anybody. Since the vow um, that rest, have you ever heard the announcement in church that, hey, pay your vow? It's between you and your God. If you pay, it's to your own advantage. If you don't pay, it is on, to your own disadvantage. Nobody troubles you. But if truly you have made that vow unto God, made that pledge unto God, you are not making because your brother has made. You are not making because uh, a sister of yours or your husband or your wife has made. You are making because it is in your heart to do it. You will definitely do it. He said, pay that which you, thou has vowed. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. Power of a vow. A vow can make God do things for you. A vow can make God turn the tide against your enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A vow is like a sacrifice. An unbeliever king sacrificed his first son. A kind of unto God. And the battle turned against the children of Israel. God respects vow, respects sacrifices. Please don't be like a fool that makes a vow and will not pay. I want you to engage this instrument today between you and your God in your house, in your home. Lord, this issue of my life, it has become a challenging issue. I don't know how to come out of it, but I have learned about the power of a vow. Lord, I vow today that if you can change my financial status, Lord God Almighty, 50% is yours. And God sees your heart. And he knows you will fulfill it. He will do his own part. He will do his own part. Bless me, oh God, bless me, and you'll see what I can do. You see, God will always try you to know. I remember a particular individual in this church. It's no more here. Anytime we are praising God, he will lie on the floor and roll. 
And I walked up to him. I said, ah, man, this one way they lie down like this. If you hammer, will you still be there? He said, I will do so. He's not here now to lie on the floor. I would have reminded him that. How come you are no more lying on the floor? I will worship you. I will do this for you. You know, God is all-knowing God. He knows that you will not do so. But he will give you a benef- the benefit of that. Let me try you and see. Let me try you. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. God Almighty will try you and you will be faithful. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will be faithful. You will be faithful. I say you will be faithful. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's a particular place in the Bible, I think in Malachi, where the Bible talks about, prove me in this. Which part of? Malachi 3, right? 310. Are you sure? Okay. Yes. It says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that they may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. There is what to do to prove God. If you are not willing to do that thing, you can't prove Him. Vow is an instrument to prove. Do you understand? You are proving God through fulfillment of the vow. You vow unto God. You vow unto God. You vow unto God. In our ministry, Young Disciples International, YDI, we have what we call covenant of purity. Young boys and young girls in YDI, they enter into a vow of chastity that they will not mess up themselves, they will not sleep around until their wedding day. And they tell God, God, if I keep this vow, this is what what I want you to do for me. As I keep this vow, Father, give me the best husband. Give me the best wife. Oh God, as I do this, advance the course of my career. Advance the course of my profession. The vow unto God. And I can tell you, as many of them that vow unto God, God has helped them and they have been faithful. Praise the name of the Lord. It's such a strong instrument that one of my beloved daughters, you know, her boyfriend, or a friend, not really a boyfriend, you know, kissed her. And she had to call me. He said, Pastor, I think I've broken my vow. I've broken my vow. I said, what? He said, yeah, we just met. I went to, the, to his place to read with others. And then he kissed me. I said, have you gone all the way? He said, no, he's just kissing. I, I'm feeling bad. I, I felt I'm the worst sinner. Praise the Lord. Kissing. But I can tell you there are people who think, who, who call themselves Christians. They sleep around like prostitutes. It does not bother them at all. Just kissing her. She felt she had sinned against God. But other people will not consider and say kissing is a normal thing. It's a normal thing. It's a normal thing. Who told you it's a normal thing? If a man can vow, I will not sleep with any, man, any woman other than my wife. God, as you give me the grace, Lord, I will be faithful. And you'll be awesome. But I can tell you, even pastors are sleeping around. Some, of course, I'm not part of them. 
Praise the Lord. No, that's the honest truth. That's the, I have to tell you who I am. I have to tell you who I am. There are ordained ministers, ordained churchgoers, that are dressed sanctimoniously come to church. They have girlfriends. Repent, for the day of judgment is at hand. The greatest desire of my heart is that every member of this church will go to heaven. That's, that's, that's my business. That's my prayer for you. That's my prayer for you. I pray that you will make heaven. Amen. You will make heaven. You will make heaven. You will make he heaven. When you are pledging to marry your wife on the wedding day, it's a vow. It's called matrimonial vow. Hey, my lawyer, see me? Is it matrimonial vow or what do you call it? Instead of you to shout it, you are shaking your head like this. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Matrimonial vow. I vow to be faithful to my wife. I vow to be faithful to my husband. You go against it, you have to repent. Tell, tell that your wife. The moment you confess, you have accepted responsibility for your actions. All this hiding will not do. Praise the Lord. I went to a particular place, a Bible school to minister, you remember? And after I talked about chastity, I talked about the life of character, that God judges our character. He does not judge our ability or judge our charisma. We are into charisma. We are into reputation. What people will say, what people know us for. But God knows, what, knows about our character. Just become a man of character. A man of integrity. Your word is your bound. And this man went back home to tell the wife, I have been cheating on you. I heard a message that I have not heard before. Today. And it's supposed to be a, an instrument in the hands of God. I've been cheating on you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There are agents of the devil. I hope you know that. Some of them come and say, say, it's pastor that I want. It's pastor, it's pastor. Me, that pastor, that's the one I'm targeting. You try me, you are roasted. Amen. No, that's the honest truth. You are roasted. If I look at you, eyeball to eyeball, you know. Alo jaku akata waka ya 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 jaga daliaba rada jaka taliaba. You are roasted. You are roasted. You are roasted. In the name of Jesus, the time has come for wives to begin to protect their marriage by praying dangerous prayers. Every strange woman that comes into my home be roasted. 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 Any strange man that comes into my family, be roasted, be roasted, be roasted. Men are very terrible. My wife at the age of something, 50 something, you know she's a beautiful woman. Up till now, they are still chasing her. Oh, lady, how are you? He said, sit down here, man. Sit down here, sit down here, man. Praise the Lord. <laughs> she went to the bank and the bank, bank manager was becoming funny. I said, I say, don't you know you are beautiful? Yeah, there's no problem. It's what you do with their, their talk that matters. Uh, if you say they are not going to talk to you, I mean, then that means you must be very vicious. You know? Yeah, okay, okay, okay. It's just when they tell you, just come and tell me. If you don't know how to handle it, I help you handle it. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. I know how to handle it. If I speak a word, if I speak a word, that man's mouth will be closed. Then he will no more have that, he will no longer have the instrument of assignment. I hope you understand what I mean. No more instrument of assignment. No more instrument. I said, that instrument that you are boasting about, I kid it. It's no more effective. Praise the Lord. And God will hear my prayers. You know why I know God will hear my prayers? 
Because God's servant Elisha was mocked by 42 children. And Elisha cursed them. Let the sheep bear. Come from the woods and consume them. Immediately, the sheep bear came out from the woods. Ate up the 42 children. God was in heaven. He sanctioned it. Because there is no power but from God. The power to eat up those mockers came from God. So if I tell you that as God's servant, if anybody is harassing your family, I can, I can, I can stop it. I can command the sheep here to eat that person up. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I beg you, if you are having issues in your marriage, write me a letter and I present it to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. I present it to God. Present it to God. Except I'm not serving God. And except God has not called me. There is no stranger that will finish your family. That will destroy your family. Where were they when the man was looking for you? Where were they when you were saying to him, I will marry you. I will be there for you. Where were they when both of you were struggling together? When you had nothing, there were nowhere to be found. Now that things are opening up, one chickeny girl is coming to take over. For where? No way. No way. No way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Nobody can take the position of my wife. Nobody can kill her. She will live to enjoy the fruit of her labor. Are you hearing what I'm saying? She will live. She will live. If you target her, you are targeting yourself. That's the honest truth I'm telling you. I'm boasting in the Lord. I'm boasting in the Lord. I know who I serve. I know who has called me. And he will vindicate me. He will vindicate me. I decree upon you today that as you engage the instrumentality of a vow, you know, vow is a personal thing. Are you aware of that? Because when Anna was making the vow, nobody knew about it. It was when the result came forth that everybody was celebrating with him. So go home. You know the issue bothering you. Use the instrument of a vow today. Maybe that is the key that you need to have your situation turn around. Glory be to God. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. You have come to the end of this message. Come fellowship with us at Great House Monday Church every Sunday and every Wednesday. We are great people of a great God to show great love. Number three, why the ice cream? That's the address, don't forget it. Before we share the last road, hotel must not go to the coast. Before we go, don't.